live from Soho, New York City. We're back. It's Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. It's April 16th. I hope you all had a lovely tax day yesterday. Yeah. Boy, did we pay some money in taxes here at Adafruit. But, you know, it's good because that means we're doing pretty well. Yep. We excellent. paid a lot in taxes. Mm -hmm. It's halfway through springtime. Sorry for our technical mishap last week. We're yeah. every time updating our software to yeah. new software and exciting things. We know a lot about XML files and YouTube Live and Wirecast, mm -hmm. and I feel like we're experts at this now. I learn something new about it every day. <laughs> yeah. What's t on today's show, Mr. Lady Ada? On today's show, the code is T-shirt. 10% off everything in the Flora and Wearables category expires on 59 p.m. tonight. Go get it. Love Wearable Wednesday, posts from around the world and more. Two videos to debut today. Ooh. Okay. Component of the week. We're going to show you a component and why it is of the week. <laughs> it's not a week component, it's a component of the week. Material spotlight. A, a cool material and why you should care about it. You've got questions, Becky has answers. If you have any wearable electronics questions at any point during the show, you can post them up in the comments anywhere you're watching this on Google Plus or YouTube. You can send us questions on Twitter and we'll queue them up for the next show and make you eligible for the show's giveaway at the end of the show. All that and more on wearable electronics with Becky Stern. Okay. Hooray! We have a lot of show today. Since we didn't have a show last week, we have a lot of show. We today. do. We do. I hope folks, uh, you know, when we go away, you, have the, 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 you get an opportunity to miss us. So, <laughs> so now we're, uh, if we're around all the time, you'll they never miss us. They miss us yeah. every day except Wednesday. Yeah. That's and true. then Wednesday they binge. Yeah. Because there's three shows ah, on Wednesdays. Yeah. And more then they miss us. And, and, but sometimes they also watch the show later yeah. on. I know my mom called me on the phone. Oh, really? She's like, where are you? Where? Did you fall off a cliff? Why wasn't there a show last week? Yeah. Well, we had a little bit of a, a trailer that said, hey, like, <clears throat> missed a show. We didn't do that either? Hi, Mom. She okay. couldn't find it. Okay. Um, All right. This week on the site, every week on the Adafruit blog, there's Wearable Wednesday. We showcase really cool projects that you guys are making, um, cool news in wearables around the world. Uh, this is a really awesome fiber optic dress by Natalie Walsh. It's uh, got like a centralized light source in the back and then the fiber optic cables come like over the shoulders and then down and get splayed out to be evenly distributed um, as the skirt. And we have a little video clip. The next slide over is a little okay. video clip that uh, my friend, oh no, the next one even. All so right. that's it at the Exploratorium. My friend Brooklyn Morris hey, got this uh, nice video for us. That is show. super cool. Yeah, isn't it? So changing color, light source, um, and um, the like poofiness of the dress holds yeah. the fibers out. I personally haven't done too much with fiber optics. It's kind of cumbersome with a, a bundle and a light source and then you have to, but yeah. I think this, uh, Natalie did a great job of um, making it look really elegant. This would be <clears> like <throat> the an Oscar winning science fiction um, costuming award type thing just a few years ago. If it had a and, swan head on it, I wouldn't <laughs> have been surprised to see Bjork in it. Yeah, and now it's something that people can do on their own. Yeah, That's so really this cool. was at the wearables event at the Exploratorium a couple weeks ago. Okay. Super cool. There was also at the same event, um, Joshua Herbert made this awesome pixel vest. It's got cool. a bajillion LEDs, and um, they're individually addressable. And he can he does like live video stuff. He'll show YouTube videos and stuff on it. Oh, that's cool. And then there's a picture of the back. back. I like this like spiky, rainbowy nubby, trend. Nubby rainbows. Yeah. Yeah. There. He looks like he uses washers. I think probably to um, like act as little reflectors for yeah, each of the pixels. Nice. Super nice neat. Touch. Next up. <clears throat> this is Aaron St. Blaine's, St. Bla St. Blaine's, um, beautiful NeoPixel mermaid tail. So she made the mermaid bra like first and it yeah. got a positive response and decided to go all the way and make this gorgeous mermaid tail. There's lots of pictures on her website. What is this genre? Cyber mer? It's, it's just cosplay. It's just or, or cyber mer. <laughs> mer, <Nice>. mer punk. <laughs> mer punk. You heard it here. Yeah. <laughs> Today there was a new you gotta, word. Somebody's got to stop letting yeah. me coin style phrases. T today on the vlog, I posted up. I, I, I said, "Oh, I'm starting to notice this. Um, dronies are the new thing. It's selfies, but it's with a drone. It's a drony." <laughs> yeah, there's like ten of these. You have you. the drone take a picture of you. Of you, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so that's what it is. Phil, like, can I have a drone? I need to make it. We have I need drones. To make some dronies. Ten percent off in the Adafruit store. Code T-shirt. <laughs> All right. Huh. <clears throat> in other news, um, NYC Resistor, some, some friends of ours at the Hackerspace in Brooklyn, have been working with the Brooklyn Ballet to make some really cool, interactive, light-up, wearable costumes. These are um, tutus for, I'm imagining that, uh, that dance in the Nutcracker where there's the snow fairies. Oh, yeah. Um, and the, they're motion activated, so they have accelerometers in the waistband and then um, yeah. neopixels, and it sort of does like a snow animation where it animates down. Um, the skirts, and there's a couple other pictures too of um, what did they call this? The 
the next one. There's some kind of like um, there was some play on words with peck, 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 like peck and pixel, you know, like pixel pecks. Yeah, like like um, pixel vest or something. Like I don't know. They called it something yeah. cool. Having to because the dude does kind of. Um, um, I'm going to seem so uncool. He does some really like um, neat dance moves where he's like kind of like parkour moving quickly. Or, something like that, or break dancing? S yes, except both of those are the uncool way to describe Macar what we're Macarena? both talking yeah, about. I know. <laughs> um, he's dancing. There's video. Go to the yeah. website and watch it. Um, he's like twitching his pecs and the LEDs are going. It's very funny. Okay. And, and awesome. So um, they're using flora and lots of silicone encased uh, stranded wire. Yeah. I've been seeing so many flora projects with costuming. Now, I'm glad we have a costuming section. It's working out. It's cool. OK, in other news, um, one of the videos we're going to show you today and the project we're launching, I mean, you know, as much as this is a project, is taking apart the Cute, shir cute yeah. Circuit Twerkle shirt. So this is the first commercially available uh, LED t-shirt we've seen. There used to be those ones from Think Geek, but I'm not convinced they're. No, it was, they're, it was EL <clears throat> panels, yeah, and it right? was like blocked off. And it wasn't it wasn't LED. It right. Was, it was EL for sure. Okay. And so this one has LEDs embedded in it. It's got a little pocket for um, the brain microcontroller that snaps in and out. Um, this is that same company that made the um, Couture line of iOS yeah. iPhone controlled animated dresses, um, and they seem to have a lockdown on this whole like lots of LEDs in the fabric uh, okay. thing. That's their thing. So let's watch the video and learn more about it. Take it away. Previously courted. Becky and Lady Ada. <laughs> Welcome to another Adafruit Wearables Teardown, everybody. Today we're looking inside the Twerkle shirt by Cute Circuit. It's the first straight up fashion design we've taken apart, and inside it's got these embedded color changing LEDs that light up and flash in reaction to movement. And the main shirt's even machine washable. The brains of the operation snaps into the shirt, and the sandwiched acrylic enclosure reminds us of the Pibo by Primaroni, another London based company. By cutting into the shirt, we revealed the flexible PCB running diagonally up the length of the design. The whole front of the shirt is made of bonded layers of fabric with the circuit secured between them. Exploring how this garment was put together was pretty interesting. Let's see what Lady Ada has to say about the hardware inside. Okay, so we've pulled out the heart brains of the Cute Circuit t-shirt. And it's got a little circuit board with the snaps, and the snaps are what um, make an electrical connection into the t-shirt. So this allows you to pull it out while you wash it or, you know, if you're like, it's like super rainy out and you want to not have um, the circuit and the power connected, you can just snap it out. And it's powered from the LiPo battery. So, you know, 250 milliamp hour LiPo batteries rechargeable through the USB port. And on here next to the snaps are all the circuits. So let's check out what's going on under the microscope because these are some pretty small parts. In the center of the circuit board surrounded by those little snaps, is a chip and if you look carefully you can kind of make out it says at mel at mega 168 looks like so it's probably an at mega 168 which is a you know sort of a half size arduino chip so probably used um, you know arduino to pr prototype this project and then they're like well we don't need the full arduino or micro so we just took the chip and stuck it on the circuit board and then over here is a, a little chip that says 7331. That's an accelerometer. It's a triple axis digital accelerometer. We've seen this in a lot of projects. It's what detects motion and then translates that motion into sparkles or twinkles or twinkles. Um, we've got a couple breakouts here. This is a six pin. I guess that's an ICSP connector. That's your standard um, AVR programming port. If you want to reprogram this or maybe you know modify the code, uh, that's probably where you want to connect. Here is a little chip little uh, five pin chip over here and a couple five pin chips over here. And then over here, this is almost certainly uh, the regulator because it has a 33 on it. And usually that means it's a 3.3 volt regulator. Um, and then down here you see a tweet that's two wire interface. So positive SDA, SCL, ground, classic, maybe for connecting other kinds of sensors or circuits. You could you know, have a gyroscope or something or a barometric pressure sensor or temperature sensor attached. And then over here is SEER for serial. So that's again, voltage, RX, TX, and ground. Maybe for debugging or maybe you program it. Side LED for maybe battery charging. And you know, a couple more breakouts here. I guess you know, they didn't use all the pins, but they, didn't, they still wanted to have some of them broken out in case they needed them. So there's an extra ground pin over here. And you can see each one is labeled D6, D5. So that's the port D. Six, port D7. So these are the actual pinouts. These are little driver chips, little transistors, maybe either for protection or for driving a little bit of extra current. And then these snaps 
are snapped on the back. So they're actually a mechanical connection, which I think is interesting. It's not soldered on. It looks like it looks like they actually riveted those on. The battery connects over here, and here is that USB mini port and the reset or control button. And then on the other side of the connection, if we look over on the t-shirt, we have the snaps and then the snaps snap into a flex PCB. So that's the other side of the connection. Flex PCBs are hard to solder to, but maybe they just crimp soldered the other side of the snap to it. We have to cut this to uh, take a look at the entire circuit. But you see there's a couple connections here, one for each pad. And they go down this long flex strip and you know down each strip to a little miniature LED. This is a teeny, teeny, teeny RGB LED. You see there's four connections. And then it says, you know, uh, 18 or 100 ohms and 18 ohms, 18 ohms. So that's the red, green, and blue. So these are not like NeoPixel LEDs. These are just plain RGB LEDs. They're either multiplexed or Charlieplexed, so that you can have, uh, you know, three or four of these LEDs down the flex circuit. Probably what they do is the red, green, and blue pins are uh, connected together, but then they change what the power ground pin is, so that they can um, cycle through all the different LEDs in order. Since they're not, you know, smart LEDs, they have to actually multiplex each LED. That's probably why they need, you know, a fairly beefy processor here. And then on the shirt itself, the LED fits behind this piece of fabric, and there's a little white spot that's actually kind of rubbery and it's actually a diffuser so this is where the led fits behind right here and since these are very uh small leds they're very good point sources we want to diffuse them if you want to make it a little bit more visible so it's not blinding but it, you can actually see the effect so it's kind of an interesting idea that they put the diffuser instead of putting a glob of, of glue or hot glue or epoxy on here they actually put the diffuser into the fabric so it's a pretty simple circuit but still has a lot of high technology in it. Has that you know, Arduino chip, has accelerometer. Looks like it's designed so maybe you can have other sensors or technologies attached to it. Possibly you know, adding a Bluetooth low energy capability at some point, the serial port or the I squared C port. So here you go, this is your, your first off the shelf LED t-shirt we've taken apart. Hopefully there will be more glowing LED t-shirts in the future. For this and many other teardowns, we use these tools, including the Adafruit USB microscope with its articulated stand. What wearable tech should we take apart next? Leave your suggestions in the comments and subscribe for more wearable electronics from Adafruit. Alrighty. That is the Twerkle shirt. What did you guys Twerkle think? Shirt. How much was that, by the way? It wasn't, it wasn't cheap. It wasn't cheap. It was 130 pounds, which is like $200. Yeah, okay. So that's, that's. I was expecting, to be honest, an a injection molded enclosure. Yeah, for I was surprised. Yeah, I was surprised by the, um, by the, uh, the build, <laughs> the perceived buildability of the enclosure. How like I, I gotcha. could, I could build it with the tools we have here. Yeah. So you popped it out of this. And yeah. It was like a, it was like a laser it's just cut. Just like a pie bow. It's just like a pie bow, laser oh, okay. cut, layers of acrylic that right. sandwich. They're probably up trying to set. figure out what the market is. And, yeah. And then once they get. Well, also orders. injection molding is expensive. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. not necessary for something like this. I just was expecting for yeah. the price point. For us, when we did injection molding, you're looking at like forty thousand dollars to get going. Yeah, to get because yeah. you have to mm -hmm, yep. prototype your design. You have to be really sure that it's going to be that shape. They make a lot of Cute Circuit makes a lot of um, um, like different. Uh, devices and clothes based on the same hardware, so I'd imagine they'd want something extensible and they're not really yeah. quite sure which is going to be the best seller, and then they'll invest the yeah. injection molded case money, but okay. it's Speaking cool. of enclosures, oh, look yeah. at this. This is some kind of enclosure. <laughs> this is um, our Stego spike hoodie with 3D printed spikes and addressable LED pixels on a, on a hooded sweatshirt with Flora. That's our next video that we want to premiere for you today. This project has a tutorial on the learning system, so yeah. you can go and, and build it yourself. It contains this week's component of the week. Mahaha, foreshadowing, yeah. foreshadowing. And, and what was the term for this, guar punk? No, no the, baby. the other spikes were baby guar. Okay. And I think this is just plain cosplay. This is for your yeah. costume. This is like fraggle, fraggle punk, fraggle rock. You can call it fraggle punk if you want to. Yeah, okay. Let's watch the video. Roll the video. Bring the past to the future with these 3D printed LED Stegosaurus spikes. These 3D printed spikes are hollow to diffuse LEDs and printed in NinjaFlex for safe and squishy goodness. You can get all the parts and tools for this project at Adafruit.com. Solder this chunky pixel strand to Flora, then mock up your layout on a hoodie using safety pins and zip ties. Rearrange the pixels and spikes until you're happy with the design. 
Then stitch the LED strand and the spikes to your hoodie with regular thread. These low poly spikes fit over each pixel and have tabs for easy sewing. Customize the layout to make this look your own and flaunt your flexible spike costume at the next office party or bar mitzvah. Flora will control the color of the LEDs and a battery pack will power these lovely pixels for hours of dino chomping fun. Head on over to the Adafruit Learning System for the complete tutorial for this project. There you can find the circuit diagram and the 3D design file so you can make your own. For more 3D printed wearables, check out our YouTube playlist and show off your own projects on our weekly show and tell on Google+. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more project videos from Adafruit. All right, and we're back. That was a really fun project to build while um, Noe and Pedro were up here visiting. Yeah. Thanks guys for helping with the Yeah, project. you'll be seeing more of them very soon. They're doing even more with Adafruit, so we're very really happy exciting. about that. Yeah. So here's a couple of shots. This is with it. This actually looks like this is right behind me, but off. This that's weird. Okay. What? <laughs> yeah. For a second, I'm like, why is it? How's it there? I wanted to show you guys how much how flexible these things are. So that's why I wanted to use the overhead. Oh um, yeah, let's go to the overhead. Just for a hot second, because I don't think in the video I, I we remembered a little too late though. I didn't include a shot that was like, look at how flexible. You cannot get hurt with that. No, you can't. Like you could go mosh dancing, and these could hit you like right in the face, and it wouldn't out. It wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't yeah. leave a mark or bruise you. Okay. I'm just kind of a weenie. Let's keep moving. So, and then uh, the last photo, and this is uh, I guess this is the flora. Yeah. Flora so power. these are the. Um, this is going to lead into our component of the week. This is the flora attached to the LEDs. Okay. Before component of the week, though, Kurt's t-shirt. You know, we sell the Ninja Flux in the store and all the components that you need. And the tools for doing teardowns. Yeah. So component of the week, Becky, what is it? It's these WS801, 811. Yeah. Um, Pixels. They are not NeoPixels. They are, we've had them since before the NeoPixels. They're mm -hmm. a two-wire um, SPI protocol addressable pixel. That means they're a little more versatile. NeoPixel is a one-wire protocol with fast timing constraints, so you need a real-time uh, processing, a real-time operating system like Arduino and all of those um, to run them. <clears throat> and so you can't run NeoPixels with like a Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone, yeah. but you can use these um, because they have one wire for clock and one for the other thing. I sound so smart today. Like data. Um, data. Yes. And <laughs> <laughs> and um, they um, are really, really bright, and they have a control chip inside. So uh, the code library that we use for them is really similar to the NeoPixel library in terms of syntax. You're all like, set pixel color, whatever, RGB value. Yeah. And um, they come in two styles, the flat-backed kind and the bullet kind. It just is sort of a difference in the way that the silicone sheathing is. Yeah. The flat-backed kind we used on the hoodie the bullet kind you might use in something like that, which is the back of a, of a sign, LED sign. Um, yeah. And this is the, a previous project we've done with them, the brake light backpack, which uses the flat backed ones as yeah. well. They're, wa they're weather resistant, which is cool. Um, they're marked which way is in and which way is out. So when you get the strand, you have to identify the input end, solder it to the flora, and you're kind of good to go. It's really pretty easy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and um, you can use, um, you know, we have big AC adapters if you want to build something that uses a whole ton of them. But for this project, um, the battery, these battery banks that we got for the Raspberry Pis are really good um, yeah. for powering, you know, a gajillion for at least a couple hours while you're at a party or out on Halloween or Burning Man. Or all the above. Okay. Just remember, our <clears throat> code is t-shirt. Yeah, you can get 10% off these LED pixels if you yeah, use the code t-shirt to buy some. Okay, material spotlight. It looks like... Ninja Flex. Ninja Flex. Ninja Flex. Um, which you can also get 10% off. Everything. All the things <laughs> to make. We sell all the things to make this. Yeah. The filament, the flora, the pixels, the battery bank, the uh -huh. USB cable, everything but the like plain thread. We that don't I sell use. plain thread here. We don't sell plain thread, but we do sell needles. Um, yeah. Ninja Flex is flexible 3D printing filament. We have a short video that Noe and Pedro made Ooh. about it that I never have gotten to show you guys yet, so I would like to show it to you now. All right, take it away. Tired of printing in ABS and PLA? Print your next creation in flexible material with Ninja Flex. This TPE material works great with wearables like these NeoPixel diffusers, our flora wristband, and our iPhone bumpers. Ninja Flex is some pretty strong stuff. Check it out. This bumper can easily hold 10 pounds of weight and still hold its shape. This material works best with spring-loaded extruders. You can upgrade yours by checking out the link in the description below. This filament extrudes well at 225 Celsius and sticks to most common build plate surfaces like painter's tape, Kapton tape, acrylic, and glass. 
Complex objects tend to print with extra artifacts and require cleanup. You can remove the access material with sharp scissors. You'll probably want to try avoiding printing parts with support material. Check out our project ideas on the Adafruit Learning System and download our models from Thingiverse. You can also search to see what other awesome stuff people are making with flexible filament. So there you have it, Ninja Flex. Stretch your possibilities and flex your creativity with flexible filament. Man, that's a lot of flexing. Share your projects with us on our weekly show and tell on Google+. Alrighty, and we're back. You can make this project with Ninja Flex. We're a little bit into Ninja Flex. I don't know if you notice on the like yeah. on our calendar of, of uh, projects that we are deep in the Ninja Flex diffuses LEDs yeah. portion of um, one of, the of cool, our lives right now. One of the cool projects that you can do right now is on Thingiverse, they released a um, 3D printable frog for dissection instead of dissecting a real frog. And, I, and you could use Ninja Flex to print it because it'd be a little oh, squishier. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so saving oh. frogs' lives, 3D printing. When I was in school, it was fetal pigs. Oh, yeah? Mm. You didn't like that? No, I didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't oh. like that at all. I didn't, okay. I didn't even touch it. Mm. <laughs> On that note, there's nothing. You could buy some Ninja Flex. Not be, fetal pigs. Be a pig in the store and buy a bunch of stuff. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's question and answer time. <clears throat> um, the prize today is... It's a flora. It's this Great. flora. I have it in my hand for you. Um, so if you Giant have a question, so all you have to do to be eligible to win is ask a relevant question about wearable electronics. And if I answer it on the show, you'll be put in the giveaway. So today's, the questions we answer today, those questions are already in here. Yeah. And I will choose a winner randomly. You, so you have a pretty good chance of winning if you submit a good question. Um, I'm Go always looking for new questions. Yeah, like hands. four or five. I usually only answer four or five on a show. So yeah. Google Plus. Twitter. Twitter. Email. Face chat. Carrier. Yeah. Raven. Yeah. Here we go. First one, this is from Christian. Christian says, what is a constant max amp for conductive thread in the peak amp time before the thread starts to heat up or react? So I haven't done this experiment with a power supply to like, you know, test, although that might make a good video, but after talking to Lady Ada, we don't think that, um, we don't think it's gonna be very f exciting experiment to film yeah. um, because the thread itself solid stainless steel, so it can actually handle a lot of of current, probably like five amps or something, but okay. the resistance will drop off pretty soon. So you're not gonna like be able to overload it because the resistance will yeah. cause too much of a problem in the first place. Um, sometimes we've seen like, um, since it's very good conductor through itself, but then when it joins to a circuit board, it's wrapping around. So mm. um, if you think about like lightning striking, a, think about like overpower, overpowering your circuit being kind of like lightning uh, striking and wherever lightning would heat up, it okay. would heat up too, so like right where the thread connects to the boards, um, that can be where it could have a little spark, and if you have like a polyester uh, fabric or something, it could um, okay. melt. Stay safe, folks. Yeah. So this is from Marlon. What PDMM breakout board for extra PDM outputs for the floor do you recommend? Would the Adafruit 16 channel 12 bit PDM be viable? I'm working on a costume that has eight small servos, and I was thinking of using an Arduino Mega. However, then it has extra things that I will not need. With the floor, I can be more space efficient have less unused outputs, cheaper, and along with sewing the board onto the actual costume for extra robotic look, I should say that the base <laughs> of the costume is a little cross shoulder pads, so heat dissipation and room for power supply is taken into account. Nice. Fun, fun project. It sounds like you're on track, and yes, that PWM driver would be great for you. Okay. You answered your own question. Great. <laughs> Even better. Next up, this is from Diego Gonzalez. Hi, I love the show, and I'm, a wear and I'm in a wearable project, and I need Easy access, Easy access which... to save battery and a push button. Any idea? Yeah. Sorry for my English. I'm from Spain. That's okay. Welcome. Next time you can ask your Sp your question in Spanish. I'll make I'll make Phil read it in Spanish, or I'll yeah. read it in Spanish, or Molly, special guest Molly, will come and read it yeah. in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, Molly, who's here, she just fluent, fluently speak Spanish. I've seen you do a couple double takes when she switches over in, on the phone. Yeah, to Spanish. So, got, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it goes um, English to Spanish very fast. You can I. I can read a little bit of Spanish, and yeah. I will translate the words I don't know if you want to ask questions in Spanish. Yes, we have cool switches for you. Um, there's the tactile on-off switch. It's push on, push off is a good um, high current capacity um, on-off switch that has long leads on it. You can kind of like stick it out the side of your garment or your bag or whatever. It's really good for wearables. And then, um, I don't know, we have lots of other buttons and switches in okay. the switches categories, but that's my favorite for you. Next up from Franklin Green, is it possible to connect a USB webcam to either Flora or Gemma? No. Um, we do have a camera in the store, a TTL serial um, still image camera, kind of low resolution, that, that takes 
photos and can work with an Arduino microcontroller. Yeah. Um, but if you want live USB webcam input, you're looking at an embedded Linux yeah. thing like Raspberry, a BeagleBone or a Raspberry, Raspberry Pi, Pi. Yep. Um, or a full-on laptop or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Beefy, beefy things when you get involved with video. Yeah, video for sure. So I have a question for Becky Stern about driving NeoPixel rings. Background in the Adafruit underscore NeoPixel library, there is an example called Strand Test. In Strand Test, there is an important recommendation to add 100 microfarad capacitor across the power leads and a 300 to 500 ohm resistor on the data input. When I look at the fritzing diagrams for Kaleidoscope eyes and NeoPixel bangle bracelet, are there any capacitor or resistor used? Question. Are the capacitor resistor required when using NeoPixels? So you answered your own question too. In the library, it says that that capacitor and resistor are recommended, and then you asked if they were required. No, they're not required. They're recommended. Uh -huh. However, that's pedantic. Um, I also checked with Lady Ada about this. Um, she says it's be when you use a wall wart, like an okay. AC adapter, um, causes more noise in the power. And so you that's what you have the capacitor for smoothing it out. Yeah. Um, and the NeoPixel rings already have resistors on them. Sure. Um, so you don't need that. But um, those recommendations are specifically for um, using a large number of NeoPixels connected to wall supply, perhaps more than one wall supply, and um, when you have long wires in between, really long wires. Okay. So you know what time it is. Giveaway time. Yay. All right. Wow, I didn't think we are on time. I didn't think we were going to... On we time, were... on budget. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the winner of the floor is, what would be over budget? I <laughs> run out of spikes. I run know. out of spikes. I've got yeah. one extra spike actually yeah. right here. And the winner is da -da 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 Franklin. Franklin, congratulations. You can't connect a USB webcam to this floor, but it is yours. Yeah. It'll just taunt you. You can't connect to me. You can connect yeah. all kinds of other stuff other things, to yeah. it. Better things. USB yeah. webcams, but those are already in your laptop. All over the place. Yeah. It's no fun. Um, so congratulations, Franklin. You can email support at adafruit.com to claim your prize. Um, I'll also reach out to you on, it looks like, YouTube. And um, you can tune in every week at 2 o'clock for more live wearable electronics with me, Becky Stern, That's and right. Mr. Lady Ada. That's right. If you want to show off your own projects, we have Show and Tell on Google Plus Hangouts every Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern right. Time. So later tonight, come with your project, show it to your webcam. Yeah. Be internet famous. Yeah. Tonight. Get a job. We've hired several <laughs> yeah. people that way. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the, uh, let's see. It's the best way to apply for a creative job at Adafruit is show five, your projects on I the think, Show and Tell. I, I think it's safe to say five... Mm -hmm people are Adafruit employees and maybe like six or seven are, are very close to Adafruit and maybe they'd like to join at some point. And or they write guides for us or we carry yeah, their products in the yeah. store. Or and so um, it's a fantastic recruiting tool and also a way to show the world your projects and maybe meet other makers and get, yeah. a, cool, and get a cool job. It's also very fun. It's very, the show and tell feels very fun. Yeah. A club of people. And then after that, um, Ask an Engineer on at 8. And um, you know, yeah, that's that's what's going on. Oh, that stuff. It'll be a fun show. We got some cool new products and everything, mm -hmm. and more. Okay. Well. Hey, thanks for we'll watching. We'll see everybody next week. Bye bye. Bye.